This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and good to have you here with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time is six o'clock and this morning Portland state of emergency has been extended as once again a group has smashed windows during a march. Plus, the U.S. lifts its pause on the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine, but there's one more hurdle to clear before distribution resumes in Oregon. First, though, let's check in with our Chris McGinnis live at home with our forecast. Rainy out there this morning. Yeah, the rain is back. It's light rain. We also have snow, of course, in the Cascades as well. Gail, and here's a live look up at Timberline Lodge. Some light snow up uh, at past level and above, so if you are traveling in that direction, be aware of uh, snowy Cascade Passes today and rain in the valley and oh boy do we need it. Okay, we're not going to get a ton of rain today, but we'll take what we can get. Radar over the last three hours showing the uh, smattering of green on the map here across much of the Pacific Northwest and this actually extends into the gorge and out into parts of the Columbia Basin as well. So a, uh, a fairly widespread but light rain event that we're seeing across the region right now. There are some pockets of moderate rain. You go up the I-5 corridor north of uh, Battleground and uh, heading up towards uh, Longview in uh, portions of Cowlitz County. You can see some yellows on the map there. All right, right now it's 49 at PDX, 45 in King City, 46 in Hillsboro. Big picture across the state. Nobody awfully cold this morning. In fact, eastern Oregon waking up to temperatures in the mid-40s as well. And the plan for today, lots of clouds, occasional showers, and Galen, it's possible we even hear a rumble of thunder later this afternoon. Outside of that, rainfall immense amounts, I should say, generally light, but obviously a Big change from where the weather has been the last two weeks or so. Highs today in the mid 50s. Back to you. Definitely a big change, Chris. Thank you so much. We'll see you in a few minutes. New this morning, one person is dead after getting hit by a max train near the Moda Center in Portland. We don't have a lot of information right now, but this was around 1.30 this morning near the stop along the interstate near the arena there. Max service was disrupted because of that investigation, but buses are serving the yellow line in place of trains. Portland police have arrested two people after another riot overnight, this one in northwest Portland. This was around 23rd and Hoyt. Vandals marching in the street broke windows at a Starbucks and spray painted graffiti on other local businesses. Now, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler has extended the city's state of emergency through the weekend. This comes after several nights of this group breaking windows. The mayor wants everyone to watch out for people in black clothing getting out of their cars at planned direct action events. The group in last night's event were wearing all black, too. The state of emergency will remain in effect through noon on Monday. It allows the mayor to declare a curfew, closed streets, and other public facilities. Now, this all comes one week after Portland police shot and killed a man in Lentz Park. Family and supporters had a vigil to honor Robert Delgado, and his family says he was in a mental health crisis when he was shot and should have been treated differently. Our Dan Haggerty has more. And above all, you know, he was a human, regardless of his situation at the present time. That doesn't make him any less human. Um, Robert Delgado's children and siblings lined up for the cameras Friday to show that he had family who loved him. And his young niece explained this. They don't think police should have killed him. And I don't think they had have a right to do that to someone. Anyone. Some quick background for you on this case. Police were called to Lentz Park on the report of a man waving a gun around. From dispatch audio, we know that the first officer to get there said that Delgado was, quote, non-compliant. He said Delgado's hands were empty at the time. Another officer said he believed the gun was in Delgado's back pocket. Witness video shows part of that confrontation with Delgado throwing a tent, then walking back to a tree. Now, just four minutes after police got to the park, officers shot him from about 90 feet away. Police say they later found a replica gun at the scene. But what we don't know still to this point is where that gun was at the time police shot Delgado. The family attorney says his killing, in their opinion, is just the latest example of Portland police mishandling someone in a mental health crisis. But what we have seen from the videos and from witness statements is, is deeply disturbing and alarming. Um, we see that Robert is clearly having a mental health crisis. He's clearly ha struggling with um, to keep his composure. Um, and we hear the way that the police were responding and directing orders at Robert in the moments when he was in crisis. Now, it's not just them saying that PPB has a problem. The attorney brought up an investigation that we've been talking a lot about on the story at 6 o'clock. 
See, the DOJ started investigating PPB's use of force and pattern of killing people with mental illnesses 10 years ago. They found the Bureau had deficiencies in policy, training, and officer accountability. The city agreed to address those issues, but when the DOJ checked in, it found the Bureau wasn't fully complying. Fast forward to last month, and the DOJ sent a letter to the city saying they had to make some changes or the federal government could begin the process of actually taking over the police bureau. Now, we're still trying to get some answers from the city on exactly what their next move is going to be. I've been told that they are going to respond to that letter by the beginning of next month. As for the Delgado family. And I just want there to be change made before another family has to experience this. They're not relying on the city to handle their case. They're now calling for Oregon's governor and the state attorney general to appoint a special prosecutor to do an independent investigation. Let's turn now to the pandemic here. U.S. health officials have lifted an 11 day pause on the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. A panel of experts recommended the change on Friday. The vaccine was paused because there were 15 cases of rare but potentially deadly blood clots. But experts say the benefits outweigh the risks and will add a warning to the vaccine for people to consider. An Oregon woman died soon after getting her shot, but officials are still investigating if the vaccine contributed to that. Oregon is also finishing its own review of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, along with other western states, before it will start using it again. Meanwhile, COVID cases are surging in Oregon. Governor Kate Brown says she may have to tighten restrictions again. At least 12 counties could move back to extreme risk soon. That would ban indoor dining and severely limit the number of people who can gather indoors at other businesses. The change would start April 30th, but we don't know which counties may be affected yet. The state is still reviewing data. This is essentially your warning. Um, should cases continue to rise and should we reach capacity in our hospital systems, there will be several counties moving into extreme risk uh, next week. Oregon is essentially in a race to vaccinate people while this new surge is happening. The governor says most of the new cases are from people who have not been vaccinated. She added if enough Oregonians get the vaccine, the state could end most COVID restrictions by the end of June. But the coming weeks will be crucial to make that happen. Neighbors are stepping up to help a southeast Portland business that someone set on fire. Fire destroyed Portland Garment Factory early Monday morning. Investigators say it's arson. The business is in the Montevilla neighborhood and produces clothing and soft goods. The owner, Britt Howard there, was one of the first to start making and donating face masks when the pandemic hit. Friends have started a GoFundMe account to help her and her employees relocate. So far, they've raised around $100,000. It's hard to talk about without getting emotional. Just, I had someone write on my Instagram that this isn't about taking. You're not taking from people. Taking is different. Taking is what the person did who lit this fire. And that was really actually a super helpful way to think of it for me because I love to be a giver and I love the community so m very much. Several businesses in the Montevilla neighborhood donated some of their own sales this week to Howard. She says she's grateful for everyone's help. Much of the western U.S. faces the threat of severe fire danger again, and researchers are closely looking at the dangers of wildfire smoke. Experts say the particulates are much worse for our lungs than we once thought. We spoke with NBC News correspondent Steve Patterson, who says if we don't do more to fight climate change now, we could be in big trouble later. But it has to start with legislation aimed at paring down the fires themselves. You can't really take out the smoke. It's about dealing with the problem uh, before it becomes even worse. The focus has to be on what happens at a macro state level. So the best answer I could tell you uh, is to maybe write a letter to your congressman saying that we need to do something to combat climate change and do something to clear all this vegetation out so these wildfires have less room to grow and less fuel to burn. And you can watch the full report on NBC.com under the nightly news section. All Oregonians 16 and up are now eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine, and some local teenagers have created a tool to help you nab the jab. We're going to show you how it works coming up.